I didn't first tell her I can answer I was it all oh, are you are you yo 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 what is up guys Nick Nakai here let's drift media thank you guys for coming back to the channel if you're near the channel please hit that subscribe button down below off topic but is it just me or does 2020 sound like a pretty epic year like 2020 2020 Nick Nakai 2020 sounds like pretty uh pretty badass like some shit's about to go down in 2020 so on today's episode we're gonna be talking about ases uh what they mean what they can do for you what they can do for your pay and more importantly how to pass them but before we get started with this video do me a favor drop a comment down below which ases you guys have and any tips you guys have on passing the ases i'm just going to kind of go a little background explaining ases and what they mean it's basically like a certification program or whatever you call it uh kind of set standard that's basically recognized around, I would say at least the whole US and there are certifications that say you know a thing or two about that subject or you know how to work on cars. So they say. There's eight main subjects for ASCs that I'm gonna be talking about in this episode. Uh, starting from the top, we got A1, which is gonna be engine repair. A2 is gonna be automatic trans. A3, manual drivetrain. A4, suspension and steering. A5, brakes. A6, electrical and electrical systems. A7 is gonna be heating and air conditioning systems. And lastly, A8, engine performance. Those are the main eight ASCs you wanna get if you're gonna pursue a career as an automotive technician, whether you're at a dealership or an independent shop or aftermarket shop like that, ASCs play a pretty big role. Real quick, before, uh, when I was taking my college classes at Citrus, I used to think like, oh, ASCs, like, oh, ASC Master Tech, oh. Just to clarify, being an ASC Master Tech does not make you a Master Tech when it comes to cars. I've got my Master Tech status two or three years ago and I was definitely nowhere near a master tech. I just had a piece of paper saying I was a master tech. Don't be intimidated guys. They're really not that bad. Hopefully this video will help you guys out in becoming an ASC master and getting you guys more pay wherever you're at. If you're looking to take your ASC test, you can go ahead to go to ASC.com. I'll leave the link in the description in case you cannot find it. But in that case, I don't know what to tell you. But you go to ASC.com, you make an account, you put in some information. Once you make an account, uh, you're gonna have to register to take your test. Uh, there's registration open every four seasons. Right now, registration is open from January 10th to March 31st. Registration is gonna be $36 to initially register. After you pay that, you pay $45 per test that you're gonna take within that season. But say you paid that 36, you can take one test right now and you can sign up for two tests later down the road within that same season to avoid paying the $36 again. And that is pass or fail. You pay it before you even take your test. So you register, you sign up, you pick a date, and then you go to the testing center and take your test. But keep in mind too, a lot of dealerships or anywhere you work at, everywhere I've been, where Toyota, GMC, and BMW, they offer to pay for your registration fee and your testing fee, whether you pass or fail. So that's kind of cool. As well, if you're going to a community college, when I was at Citrus, they offered to pay from two, pass or fail. So there's really no excuse not to take them. Each test, if you're taking it for the first time, is gonna be anywhere from like 40 to 70 questions. I believe it's 70 questions for the first time. And those are the questions you're getting graded on, but you only have to get a 70%, which is basically a C to pass the test. And if I recall correctly, it's like an hour or two hours if it's like a full test. So you basically have like two minutes, two or maybe just over two minutes per question. So you kind of have to like go through them quickly. Anyone could sign up and register for the test. Um, so like if you have no experience or no schooling, you can just go sign up on the website, go to the testing center and take your tests. And if you pass the test, then you'll kind of be certified, but you won't be officially certified and you won't get the paper in the mail until you have your work experience on file. So they require two years minimum of work experience or two years of school experience and one year real world experience, work experience. 
but that shouldn't stop you. I would recommend just taking them and having the certifications because even if you went to a job site and try to apply, you can be like, look, I have my SE certifications. I passed the test. I just need the work experience to be actually officially certified. Once you have your work experience and you pass your test, then you get your official certifications would look a little bit something like this. This is my certification. Uh, there's all backwards those are all eight and then it'll show you right there when they expire I think it's five or six years they're good for until you have to recertify and once you recertify though it's cool because you just take a short version of the test so instead of being a 70 question test it's gonna be a short little 35 question test so that's cool you got the paper saying I'm ASC certified and you get like a little magnetic badge or whatever and a patch for your jackets so that's kind of a cool little thing they give you well, let's get back to going to take your test uh, you sign up you go take your test you take it you can choose there's different testing facilities around your area so you just got to find the one you want find the date pick the time and then you go to take your test and when you go you're gonna be kind of like what the hell is this it's just kind of like a random testing facility and then you have to empty your pockets, you put your phone, your wallet, and your keys in a locker, and then you stand there, and then they metal detector you to uh, make sure you don't have any cameras and stuff like that, because they're really strict on like you trying to steal answers and steal what's like on the test so and also too when you're sitting down taking the test there's going to be like a camera in front of you a camera over you and somebody in the other room watching you so like they're really strict to make sure you're legitly taking the test and not like cheating or doing anything shady kind of crazy because the first time i went i was like damn like i'm taking an asc test or like we flying across the border so after you take your tests um they tell you right away like within like two minutes they have the results and Basically, it'll break down the test into like a couple areas like diagnosis, mechanical, stuff like that. And you'll know if you pass or fail. And if you pass within the month, you should get your certification in the mail. Now that you guys have a little understanding about ASC testing, how they're like and stuff like that, um, what is the point of getting your ASCs? A lot of people may ask. The biggest reasons I feel like you should get your ASC certifications, even if your job is not willing to pay you more, is it just looks better on your resume or your profile. So anywhere you go, they're gonna be asking you what kind of certifications you have and what kind of schooling you have. Say you don't have schooling, but you have your ASCs and you're an ASC master, that's gonna look a lot better than just having a little two-year T10 program saying I took these classes. Um, that goes for anywhere too, like when I went to BMW, I didn't have any BMW experience, but I was an ASC master tech, so I really feel like that helped me get the job. And basically anywhere you go, they're gonna wanna know what you have, and having those certifications will usually put you at a higher pay point than someone they just hire off the streets or just off schooling with no certifications. And if you're already working at a dealership, uh, most places I've been, or pretty much ever I've been, the more ASCs you have, the more money you're gonna make per hour. So that's another reason I encourage it, you to get them because it's just a quick little test, you take it, your life's the still same, but you're making more money per hour, which really makes a big difference when it comes to flagging. And ASC techs are not as common as you think. When I was at Toyota, um, I would say like maybe 60% of the technicians actually had ASC certifications. The rest of them, they didn't really care because they didn't see it as something that would benefit them. If your shop's not willing to pay you more once you become an ASC Master Tech and have all these cert certifications under your belt, uh, you could always go somewhere else because I guarantee you, you will get paid more somewhere else. Oh, everywhere is different. Uh, when I was at Toyota, I just had like three ASCs when I started and then once I got on the line, I got the rest of them and became a Master Tech and got a couple more bucks just for having a Master Tech status. Let's get to the most important part, how to prepare and pass these damn ASC tests. So it's ultimately a test, like going to school, anything you guys have taken tests before, I'm sure. And I guess some advice would be get your sleep and study ahead of time when you're gonna go take the test. And the beauty is, since they're divided into eight subjects, if you only wanna take one at a time, you can study the shit out of just that one subject, so that way when you're ready to take the test, you're well prepared. There's a lot of uh, study guides and 
uh, sample tests on the internet. There's a lot of free sample tests, so those are really helpful to kind of give you like a first-hand idea of how the questions are gonna come at you. It's not gonna be the exact same as the ASC test, but kind of gets you familiar with uh, how they're orientated. There's also uh, study guides you can buy. There's some really good books that are like basically per ASC. There's like a1 through A8 study guide so you can get the book, study it all, and there's even sample t uh, a sample test in the back of that book. So I'm really sad because I had an ASC study guide that I had on Google Drive, but I can't log into that account anymore and the link's already expired. So I wanted to hook you guys up with that. If I find it, I'll add it into the link, but I'm really sorry about that, guys. So that's kind of what I did. I didn't buy any books. I would I was at the dealership, so a lot of people had the study books. So I would kind of borrow them, but I really didn't read the books and I don't feel like they really helped me because honestly, when I took each test, it got I went straight from work, so I was tired of shit. And then I just went and winged it and took the tests and just basically based it off the knowledge that I learned at Citrus College, which actually did help a lot, I feel like. So I know everyone's different. Some people really like to study and take a test. I've been one of those people where I don't really study and it's worked for me. To give you guys an example of some of the questions you will see a lot, actually a lot of the questions you're gonna see are Technician A, Technician B style questions. So for example, you're gonna get a question, say you're taking like chassis and suspension, or brakes, you might get a question saying, technician A says that when a wheel is out of balance, it will always vibrate in the steering wheel. And then it'll say, technician B states that when your brake rotors are out of parallelism, it's going to cause, it may cause steering wheel vibration. And then the answers will be, technician A is correct, technician B is correct, both technicians are correct, or neither technicians are correct. So they're all multiple choice. It's gonna be four answers for every question, but you have to really read the question carefully because if you think about that last statement, technician A said an out of balance wheel will always cause steering wheel vibration. They didn't say at freeway, freeway speed or at street speeds. So technician A is technically not correct because an out of balance wheel will not always cause steering wheel vibration. And technician B would be correct because he said a brake rotor that is out of parallelism may cause steering wheel vibration when braking. So you really have to pay attention to those key words. They're gonna say always, may, possibly, could be, or never. So I can't stress that enough. You really have to pay attention because they will get you because yeah, technician A was technically correct because a wheel out of balance, if you're on the freeway, it's gonna shake the shit out of the steering wheel. But it, they said always, key word. So that's one tip I have. Another tip is keep in mind that these ASC tests are based around uh, American automobiles like GM, Chevy, stuff like that. So their wiring diagrams are gonna be GM, Chevy wired, wiring diagrams, American made, and also their terminology. So you have to really be careful uh, the words they're putting out there because you might not even know what they mean or it might be something you know what it means but it's just worded differently. So like say you work for BMW, the variable valve timing gears, they call them Vanos gears. They don't call them VVTI gears. But if you're at Toyota or even Chevy, they call them VVTI ge gears, variable valve timing gears. So that's one thing you really need to consider. So I would recommend researching some American vehicle terminology. So that way you're not so lost when you read the questions. But luckily when you take the test, they have a composite vehicle, which is basically the vehicle they're basing the test off of. So if you go to the left side of the screen when you're taking the test, you can click like uh, glossary or composite vehicle, some shit. And then it'll bring up a vehicle and kind of show you some of the systems and diagrams that they're basing the questions off. So that is really helpful because I can't remember what exactly, but there was a word in there that I wasn't really sure what they were talking about. And then I went to the composite vehicle and looked up the word and explained it to me. And then I was more familiar with the question and that really helped me out because it kind of like pointed me in the right direction and gave me a clue to put me back on track. Uh, next tip I have, if you're totally stuck on the question and like you realize you're sitting there for like over three or four minutes, uh, the test is timed. So my best advice would be to just skip it. You can go back to it at the end of the, uh, end of the test and answer it later because you don't wanna get stuck on a question, kill all your time, and then next thing you know, you have like 20 minutes to answer like 
35 questions because you wasted all that time on that question. And the cool thing is that if you skip a question, it'll flag it. So before you even submit the test, you can go back and make sure you answered every single question. And then my best piece of advice when taking ASC tests, because this seems tried and true for me, it's always worked, even when I didn't study and I wasn't sure if I was gonna pass the test, would be eliminate the dumb answers. Um, there's gonna be four answers because it's multiple choice. More than likely, two of the answers will make no sense or it just sounds a little skeptical or fishy. So if I'm unsure about the answer, I'll look at the answers and read through them and look at two answers that maybe don't make sense at all and just cross them out. And that way I don't even worry about those answers and then I narrow it down to two answers. So even if you have to guess on one, it's more like a 50-50 shot versus a one out of four shot. But besides that, the only other tip I could probably give you guys is mindset. Like, you need to go into the test with that attitude, like, I'm gonna pass this test. Don't go into that test thinking like, oh, I don't know shit, like, I'm gonna fail this test. Because if you tell yourself you're gonna fail the test, you're probably gonna fail the test. Every time I've taken the test, I just tell myself, I got this, I'm gonna get this test, I'm gonna pass. And so far, I've passed them first try, all of them, so. I'm pretty proud of myself, and if I did it with the little shit that I know, I'm sure you guys can too. So, that's it for this episode. Let me know if I missed anything. I try to put together as much information about ASC testing and tactics that I use to pass them to help you guys get a better understanding and hopefully put you guys in the right direction. That's it for this episode. Happy New Year's, guys. We're in 2020. Let's do things. Catch you guys later. Peace! This is for the cheese and this is for the hustlers This is for the hustlers, now back to the cheese